So thank you all for uh, attending this this session. I, I always say on these that it's it's crazy how the time flies. And I sent the email where it was talking about Salesforce time and stuff. Uh, but it's well now over 30 days, probably more towards 40 uh, since we actually met in Amsterdam. So I just hope things yeah. have been going going really well, uh, both from a, not this area side of things, but then also uh, this area side of things as well. And I hope it's all, all helped. Uh, so thank you for those who've, who've filled in the survey. Uh, for those who haven't as yet, please, please do this. Um, yeah, we'll do, we'll do. Yeah. Thank you. So talent development are liking what they're hearing. Uh, so we had Mike Silverberg in for half a day and he he thinks it fits into their portfolio of, thing, of offers. So uh, we just need the data, which so far is looking great. So we'll talk more later on, on this and understand from, from your own perspectives what you feel as though the value of this has been to you. After all, the data says one thing, uh, but for me, hearing some of the stories and how you may have embraced some of the things is, is to me what, what really does matter. So what we'll basically cover on, we'll reflect a little bit on the journey that, you, that you've been through. So from that two day session all the way through to today and also a little bit beyond. Uh, we'll be going through some toolkit. So Conscious, we've been dropping the, the daily emails over to you. Uh, I know they stopped a couple of days ago, but we do have other things that we can actually uh, provide you with uh, going forward as well. And then also kind of application ideas. So just discussing maybe different ways that you've actually applied this already or may look to apply it. And we'll just be doing that in kind of a group setting. But for the moment, uh, if, if you may be familiar with this slide, they maybe saw it four or five times during that, that two days. Uh, but we're just going to take a minute just to arrive, uh, just to kind of clear our heads, given it's the end of the week, it's Friday, ever closer to the weekend, uh, just to kind of get rid of uh, any troubles or strains uh, that we may have had. So if you just find yourself sitting comfortably, maybe you're back upright, your feet firmly on the floor, and just take a few deep breaths in, breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Just one more time. Deep breath in. And deep breath out. And just for a moment, just reflect a little bit on how this last 30 days has been for you. Just have a think maybe about what it was like before, how you may have come to respond to things maybe a little bit differently than what you did before. And maybe there was certain practices that you really did embrace and that you really thoroughly enjoyed, but then others, maybe not so, maybe bring some of those to mind and just be curious about them. And then shift your attention to the weekend. The fact that we're at the end of the working week, just getting ready in a few hours to possibly be winding down, to spend time doing things that we enjoy. Just take a deep breath in and then release. Okay. So we're going to start by just covering off a bit of a recap as to, to what we've been through. As uh, conscious, we each took away things from these two days in, in different, different ways. So throughout the first day, we, we looked at mindfulness as a starting point. Uh, so we introduced some of the, the very kind of relatively short to begin with, just to kind of ease you in. And looking at kind of mindfulness, possibly as an introduction for many of you, uh, maybe not for many of you as well. Maybe you've kind of dabbled in this before. Then we looked into self-awareness. So we started exploring our inner selves and how we may, may sometimes be one of our worst critics. Uh, some of you may have seen a tweet from Mark Benioff just last week uh, saying that basically he himself, his own mind, is his worst inner critic and that he was very grateful for being taught meditation 30 years ago 
uh, because that's his way of combating them. And he was asking all his followers what their views were. So this kind of thing is resonating right at the top. And then self-management. So we start exploring the way that we can then, once we become more aware of what is going on within our body, our mind and our environment, how we can then begin to manage that. And examples here was where we talked about the amygdala hijack and it was the practices such as the stop, breathe, notice, reflect and respond. But the key, key messages here was around the way that we typically operate our days on autopilot and how we, how we somewhat need to shift uh, from that to becoming aware, how becoming aware can help to foster connection with relationships as opposed to just being on autopilot and just operating on habit. And then self-management, the moving from compulsion to choice. So the, I, I am going to respond in this way, I respond in this way because it's what I've done all the time. Uh, to something much more thoughtful and allowing you to reflect that bit more before you did this. So then day two moved more into kind of the leadership and connective elements. So where we explored motivation. So we, we kind of looked at ourselves, understood what some of our, our future may hold, our purpose. Uh, we looked at kind of defining that vision. We explored empathy. Uh, so the video was there from the likes of Brené Brown. Uh, just talking about the way that empathy can differ from sympathy and how empathy can foster connections with people. Uh, so particularly as we're going on the journey we are with Salesforce on our group, on our growth, that this is kind of a critical skill. And then finally with leadership, just understanding where we're going to go next. And then hopefully at the start of this kind of support network uh, that we have going forward. So we went through a whole load of practices and the whole purpose of this was that you may do all of them under that is perfectly normal, perfectly acceptable. Uh, but what we tend to find is that people pick and choose. They find ones that they, they enjoy, that they find the time to do, but then others that maybe not, maybe not so, but some of those that you've maybe not really practiced as yet, maybe ones that you may choose to play around with. Uh, I'd mentioned in the workshop about journaling, uh, I have a bit of an up-down relationship personally with journaling. Um, but, you know, that's something that uh, may pick up again. So day two. <clears throat> so, so what we're going to actually do is just do a bit of a reflection uh, on the two days, but then also beyond the 30 days. And I guess more of a focus on this 30 days. And it's just kind of opening it up to the group here just to kind of get a little bit of a reflection. This is just going to be popcorn style where we're just going to go around. People can just jump in with uh, kind of any comments, any questions, any observations, experiences that they have. So these exercises, they are a little different to how we run them in the workshop. So given that we were face to face, could easily separate people out into the groups. We find with this popcorn style actually works, works best. So we could literally talk about anything here. Uh, but some prompts, some potential prompts here. So as a result of SIY, I, the impact of my practice has been, the potential I see of ongoing practice is, and what have you noticed as a result of applying what you've learned? So you can either pick one of those prompts and if anyone's got any comments or any questions, just do feel free to, to jump in. So open it up to the room. I found it very positive to do it in a, uh, a work group setting because, you know, there's a lot of people working with these kinds of things and you, at work, you often don't speak to each other a lot. So I think that's really opened up uh, uh, some conversations. So that was positive to me. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other, any other comments? Yeah, I, I agree with France. Like you, you get to know people in a in a very different way, right? So so that is definitely a positive part of it. Hmm. Myself, um, I've been really enjoying the journaling. So I've I've tried to do the journaling at least during my workday. So indeed, getting my my little booklet out and writing before I exit my workroom, basically. So before I go home home and spend time with the family. And it has really helped me to unwind. 
So just emptying my head and parking everything that I'm still uh, thinking of, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and that has really helped me. So sort of writing down um, what has made me happy today, what have been my challenges and maybe irritations that came up during the day. Okay. Um, so that has really helped me. I found that very useful. Great, great applications. And I like the fact that you both mentioned there about the workplace, because the one thing we emphasized was that this wasn't just about the workplace. It was actually about our personal journeys here. But naturally, the workplace was going to be a benefit, benefit benefactor of, of some of these practices. Um, and one reason I mentioned this is because I've, I've been hearing that like the wellness spaces aren't necessarily used in the office too much because there maybe is a little bit of discomfort in people sometimes doing this kind of thing in their own in their work time. Um, mm. So it's quite pleasing that you know there's the people are able to to think in this way. Okay. I personally just find the meditation space in the office still too loud. Mm. So you can still hear the people on the other side of the wall, basically. So, um, but I've been following the practices, especially when working from home. It's the first thing I did before starting up for the day, basically. Okay. So that's been really good. Yeah, great. If you haven't already, maybe we're feeding that back because uh, soundproofing is is important in these kind of things. Yeah. Feeding that back to the uh, the facilities team. Cool. Okay. And then what else? Any other experiences? Must be, must be. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think also, what maybe other thing to add because we, we I think we're, there are a lot of experiences, but the fact that we that I stood still for two days with this, and I'm also doing an, a, 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 a different course where I also have to, have to do a lot of thinking and standing still, but standing still is really good. Um, uh, it's good because you're we're always so in a rush so just taking the time at the office for for two days just to do this mm. really helped me also during other days to uh yeah stand still every now and then i'm still mm. it has been a roller coaster again the last four <laughs> weeks but uh you know even if it's only a minute or two minutes you know that already helps just thinking back on what we did here so for me that's uh, super helpful yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think that just having those small moments in the day and um, I think also the daily emails just to remind you of that were really, really helpful. Great. So uh, for me, actually, I, I used to th think that it should be like the whole day. But actually, if you take three times five minutes, it's just as good, you know, and while you're doing that, you're actually also learning yourself a new habit and then it becomes the whole day eventually hopefully <laughs> yeah yes so uh, i think the taking the time it, it's a strange one because people look at it as though i'm taking the time out of out of work so been if, if you're in services i'm not billing time to my customer you know therefore i'm not earning any money the business is earning money but it's like it potentially helps with productivity it allows you to approach yeah. them with a fresh mind rather than going in with all the noise that is always surrounding us. Um, there's been questions if this could be done virtually. And whilst I know the answer is yes, it's okay, so how how effective will that be? Yeah, less. To be honest, I think I think that would take the a little bit of the magic out. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's that's where we thought. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so just leave, so the next one was asking for any comments or questions. The next slide, but we'll just kind of open it up. So is there any other kind of experience that people want to revert on to? And if not, we'll move on. No. Okay. Cool. There'll be other opportunities if uh, anything comes to mind. Okay. So uh, the learning journey. So. What we've covered off is, is first the, the learning, uh, the practice, which the practice was also kind of blended into that learning. So the learning is the first the first two days, so those two blended together. Then the other one was also that community element. And we recognize this as being one of the most important, which is why we 
basically put you into buddies, uh, which I hope those kind of meetings are, are going great. Uh, if if they're, they're not, then I'm sure there are many others uh, who are uh, basically around to, to connect with on this. And I know one commitment that I've made that I haven't actually been able to do yet is actually add you into the alumni group, uh, which I will actually write down now and make sure I get that done as soon as. Um, so this is just a group where you can actually begin to connect with others. Who have, uh, been... Which group? Which group did you say, Stefan? No? Uh, just an alumni group for people who were in sales. Oh, an alumni, uh, alumni group. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so it just yeah. gives you an opportunity to to potentially talk to other people who may have have gone through this and maybe yeah. some of this stuff. Although, to be honest, there's only about another fifteen people. Uh, actually, no, there's more because there was a US group. Uh, ignore me. Uh, there's probably about fifty or sixty <laughs> that I completely ignored. The ones in a map. Um, but yeah, the community is a key thing because, as we mentioned with the with the story um, about Gopi, when he was going to meet, well, wanted to meet the Dalai Lama, it was in sharing his vision, his goals, his ambitions that actually enabled that to happen. And we are seeing a lot more personal stuff in this coming up in Salesforce, like the V two Me. Uh, the, the the app is coming along. Uh, I filled mine in a short while ago, and I think it's it has a lot of potential uh, to share. Yeah, like too. Um, yeah, so yeah the more... we do that in our team. Uh, we do that in our team meetings, sh sharing the feed to me. Yeah, I think it is a real good thing uh, that we have. Yeah. Um, so yeah. we're going to focus on a little bit in on the community side of things, and I mentioned about the toolkit uh, that we're going to give you as well. So there's a number of things here because what we are really conscious of with the program is that it's two days where it might be a bit of a sometimes a deep dive into things, more kind of a, a broader kind of spectrum, but. After the 28 days, you probably sense this in the last couple of days, or you may have been able to continue your practice, that it's somewhat dropping off of a cliff. It's like, okay, so what resources do I go to? Where do I go to get this, that, and the other? So <clears throat> we wanted to kind of keep that going, and particularly the reflective element of things. So this is all different things we could be doing. I'll go into each one in detail as we go through this call. But the first is the conscious development curricula. So this is something we've been experimenting with in the last few months. Uh, there's also mindful meetings, mm -hmm. uh, which is anything from like the 30, 60 seconds we did at the start of this call. Uh, Salesforce cohort of alumni, which I'll add you into. The, and then there's deepening or widening of the practice. So going beyond what we've spoke about here and potentially exploring other things. And then teacher training. Uh, some of you may be interested in hearing about some of, some of this. So the first one, the curricula. So this was an idea, there's a, there's a group of us who contribute into uh, a number of leaders, V2 moms, uh, for leadership development. And the conscious agenda is one thing that, that we're working on from a leadership level and also an employee level. And we recognize that we have programs like this, but then arming people with that reflective element is, is pretty key. So the purpose of this is it's an email uh, that we can send out pretty much right away. So as soon as uh, I get settled later on, I can send that out to you. We have it aligned to the manager flywheel. It's in monthly format. So for those of you familiar with the flywheel, they have a specific theme, uh, like the recent one was developing your people, uh, but we put a different spin on it of uh, kind of developing our people. You will then receive bi-weekly briefs as well. So you'll get your main email at the 1st of June. You'll get your mid mid. Uh, month one of here's three key takeaways from that main briefing and what it is it provides kind of curated content for things like classic articles ted talks there's meditations uh, youtube videos there's a whole range of things on there um you don't have to go through every single one of them you might want to take a look at a few um and the most important bit is that reflective lens it has a little bit of a prompt that you could either talk to your buddy about uh, you could journal about it. You could actually ask yourself the question during the meditation. It's just what we often do, or at least what I often do, is sit, I read the article, and then, oh, okay, that, that was an interesting read. But I never actually go into that reflective side of things. Of, okay, so how am I doing this in my life? How is that different to the way that I'm doing things? Is there things that I can begin to change? Uh, we also link in with talent development here, so we pull on some of their trails that they have, some of the webinars that they run, and also existing materials. The 100% intention is to create a real joined-up approach here. Um, and then with the interactions, we also give ideas for how you may wish to meet with your entire cohort. 
uh, with your uh, buddy, just some little prompts so you can just keep things going, just try and make things really easy for you to continue the journey. So what I'll do is I'll pause for questions at the end of these and then we can, we can talk through each of them. Okay. So the next one is mindful meetings. So yeah, that's not really a mindful meeting, is it? Quite dull, boring. There's probably been probably quite a lot of these throughout the day. I know I certainly am. But this also isn't a mindful meeting. So when we talk about mindful meetings, people often think that this is what you actually bring into the table, where it's not. A mindful meeting is just something that, like we did earlier, just introduces the concept, just allows us to just create a bit of grounding. Uh, rather than people rushing into a meeting and then simply rushing out into the next one. What what we would actually love and what we're trying to push is that leadership will actually do this on their town halls and actually have just a 30 second opening to allow people just to arrive in the room. Um, but it goes beyond that introduction. It focuses on how the participants interact. So if we think about some of the exercises that we did, such as active listening, uh, we can also put those into play. And it's all with the name of kind of creating conditions for us to like focus that little better. Maybe not be on our emails whilst we're in the meetings, be able to think of thoughtful responses, create connections amongst people and those kind of things. So the how, uh, it's basically approaching it with that facilitator mindset. So if nobody else jumps in and volunteers to do, kind of like, can we do a 30 second to arrive, then try it yourself. Just see if people are open to that and just doing it with that minute to arrive. Maybe just doing participant check-ins. So you could just ask, how, how are you feeling? You maybe don't ask this, this enough in the corporate world of like, how are you feeling? <laughs> you know, mental health is becoming increasingly in focus and important. And so, you know, just asking somebody how they are as they enter the meeting. Uh, agenda monitoring, uh, it, was, it was funny, the, the, I may have mentioned in the in the SIY workshop, I, I can't remember this one, but one of the guys I was working with was on a call and he arrived to the, minute, the meeting 15 minutes late and he said, oh, it's okay, I'll just arrive to the next meeting 15 minutes late as well. It's not really the right mindset. And <laughs> my boss's boss no. actually took the approach of saying that he's actually going to kick off his town halls one minute past the hour. And so if people are on the call and they miss the first bit, okay, it's just about being stronger on those things. Yeah, uh, makes sense. Yeah. I'd spoke about the cohort and the alumni, so I'm going to add you into uh, the group. I'll be honest, there's not a lot of activity there, um, but there is uh, plans to be. Uh, so I thought like, things like posting some of the content from the emails and maybe a bit of reflections into there as well. So at least if you're in that group and I'm tagging the group, then you may see some of this floating around in all the noise that's on chatter. Uh, but the key is about kind of continuing the journey. Uh, but one of the main things, just if, if you find some things beneficial to yourself, just tell others about it. We really kind of need to grow this if, if the company growth is to be successful and we are to create the conditions that we aspire to in the company. So yeah, just to find something cool, an article, uh, maybe something you found within your practice that you're comfortable sharing with. Can, anything on, on that group, anything you want. So then there's the deepening and the widening of the practice. And I'll tell a little bit of a personal story here. Um, so originally I, I had, I, I still am not religious. I'm not religious in any form. I just kind of practice meditation because I understand what the benefits are. However, I did find a Buddhist center, which was about 15 miles down the road from me. And what it's meant is that within the last year, I've spent quite a lot of time there. So I'm not practicing Buddhist in Buddhist Buddhism in any way, but I'm kind of sat experiencing what they what they're doing, the practices, the mantras. Um, it also gives a good volunteer angle because they they have woodland retreats where you go along and chop down trees, and it's an, it's an art of meditation in, in doing that in, in some weird weird way. Um, so you know, there's all these things that you can do, begin to learn different strands. So there are a lot of different strands, a lot of different practices, art of living. Is a, is a really good one to potentially go down and, and choose. They, they have a program called Happiness, the Happiness Program, uh, just teaching the basics about being happy and stuff that we so often just, uh, just forgo and, and forget. 
so yeah, uh, there's a few few on there. Uh, Art of Living, Vipassana, Dharma. Uh, we'll also practice with others. We do have something that we're looking to kick off that my paternity for the last few days put on hold a little bit. Uh, but doing virtual meditations. So just invite people along because sometimes people are a little bit uncomfortable practicing by themselves. They often don't want to be in a room in front of people. So offering people that chance to meditate kind of on your own, but with everybody else kind of thing. Um, it could provide people some, some good opportunity. Okay. Yep. Uh, so the final one, and then we'll open it up for any, any questions on these and we can go back to any of them is, is the teacher training. Um, so search inside yourself. They are running a program, uh, where you can become a teacher. Salesforce, we're trying to negotiate this as well with uh, with the Campono team. Uh, so you'd have their more talent development uh, fund it for some teaching internally. Um, so for those who have, have typically some previous experience, I think they, they ask for a, a little bit of background in this, but not necessarily. Um, it may be something that you wish to explore. So please do kind of reach out if you're interested in this space. And 100%, if, if Search Inside Yourself at yeah, this time isn't the right thing, but you are comfortable in kind of leading the meditations and things, we're happy to hear from you and get you involved in some of the virtual stuff uh, that is going going on, whilst also naturally claiming VTO time, because you're actually helping other employees. <laughs> to make it practical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... Um, given that we've kind of reached the end here, so I want to kind of go over those those five things. So I'd go back to one of the previous ones. Uh, where are we? So these here. So does everyone, anyone have any questions, comments about either of these five five items? Five things. Um, no, no, not for me. No. No, I'm also uh, okay. Okay. Well, we hope that that this stuff, as we say, allows you to to not just feel as though you you're just on this journey and you have to find your own way. I know there are a lot of cool things, Headspace, Calm. That there are kind of really cool apps. There's some really cool tech out there. Um, the Muse is a, a brain sensing headband, uh, which uh, whilst you're meditating, it will look for brain signals for when your mind's distracted. It's uh, quite cool. And for those who like sports, uh, I've found this piece of kit called a Halo Sport 2. And it's uh, like a neuro primer. So apparently it helps you in performance in sport. It's a bit weird, it like elect electro signals to your brain or something, uh, it's a bit crazy. Uh, so there's all sorts of things out there. Um, you can put all these kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, if, if there's kind of no other kind of questions or comments, I will get there in the end. Then, oh, sorry, uh, I actually realized there is one more practice. A little bit of journaling. So, do you have your pens and, pa do you have pens and paper handy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about this. I totally forgot about this little exercise. <laughs> so if we just take a few minutes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll do is just do this quick journaling exercise just to kind of allow you to reflect a little bit, maybe on some things that we've spoke about on this call. It may be some things that uh, that you've experienced in the 30 days or, or even the, um, the workshop itself. So what we'll do is take a couple of minutes on each prompt. So the first prompt is an, out an ideal outcome of my SIY experience is dot 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 an ideal outcome of my SIY experience is dot 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 and just take two minutes and then I will ring the bell
Okay, so just drawing your light in to a close. And the next moment, things I can do next to support that vision are things I can do next to support that vision are just two minutes there, and I'll ring the bell. So just drawing your writing to a close. So I hope that helps provide a little bit more reflection and it may also be something that you wish to take to your buddy, your group, or maybe even to share to the group once I add you in. So to really finish off this time then, um, so for support, just tell, tell others about the experience that you went through. We would love to, to hear quotes from people uh, of what their experience, not just for the two days, but the last 30 days, and even what they think going forward uh, would be, uh, how it benefits. So if you have some kind of real success stories, then please do, do tell us. If you have any questions about any of this, any of the two days, or even anything beyond, um, what, what we have uh, done is pulled a, a list of people throughout Salesforce who are trained, certified teachers of uh, mindfulness. So can at least call up on a group of people uh, to help ask any questions that you may have as well. And, and then can find a buddy. So you have your buddy already from the group, but you may also choose another one. Like why not? Why not meet up with other people? <clears throat> the same kind of thing. So when, when we add you into the, the group, if there's some commonalities that you find or if people are open to it, then we could look at, look at doing that. Just kind of set up something where we could reassign people out to to other people after all expanding network is an important thing and so just remember so the practice is the thing that matters uh, just just kind of keep plugging away there'll be days when you 100 percent do not feel like doing it uh, but just a minute or two you know that, that's that's all it is you don't have to sit for the sit for the five ten minutes if you don't feel like it just do a short session and there's the toolkit resources there as well which uh, i think we had Oh, we shared the other one, which is kind of the, the what next stuff. But, uh, I'll specifically share out the uh, the alumni toolkit and make sure that you have this deck as well uh, with information in. It just provides a, a little bit more information. Mm -hmm. um, the post program assessment. So thank you for for those who who've done it and those who said that they they're going to fill this in. Uh, we really appreciate that, and uh, I just want to thank you once again for being in an awesome group. Uh, on, on all of this, uh, it, it was truly great. Like me and Fred reflected afterwards and saying like the way that, that you really embraced the practices, how how you kind of responded to questions with your own experiences to each other in how you handle things uh, was brilliant. And I'll let you into a secret. So Fred said that she um, she's taught two sessions since then. And uh, I'm not, I'm actually joking here guys, but she actually said that your session has been by far the best so far. 
so well done. <laughs> the first, the first time is always the best, not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, thank you. Um, let us close. Okay. Do a minute yeah. session. Um, well. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Stefan. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so for much. this initiative. Yeah, I think it's a great initiative, and I hope you can build it out within Salesforce, and I hope we can build it out within Salesforce. So, uh, and in the rest of our world. So, uh, super. Good. Thanks. Exactly, and enjoy this time with your family, Stefan. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I, I will look to add yeah. it to, to the yeah. chat. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And yeah. as well, so Rosa, you weren't there at the end, but we we did give a real heartfelt thank to yourself and Tom for everything you. Did in organizing this so thank you once again thank you okay Yo, thank you bye. 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 have a good weekend bye bye bye, bye. bye. bye.